Are you running a ton of different strategies? Are they hedging each other? What is, yeah, what does 20,000 trades in a day even look like? Yeah, so these are, think about these as like completely automated strategies. So there's not a human go, sitting there like clicking a keyboard and doing stuff like that. Um, you know, I'd, I'd go insane if we had to do that right as a human. So clearly it's uh, being completely automated. These strategies are triggered by certain parameters um, that might trigger, you know, based on market conditions or based on, usually it's based on like very micro level price changes within the market. So um, in terms of the kind strategy we're doing, think of it as like looking through a microscope at the financial markets on like every single thing that's happening and um, and then being able to come up with opportunities that are within that range. So almost like, yeah, looking at like, think of it like bacteria, like looking at a microscope, <laughs> um, they, they exist and there's a lot of it, um, but it's just that they're a lot smaller in terms of scale. Scale. And so, um, you know, in case you're curious, like the average like size of a trade, for example, wouldn't be as large as what you would imagine like other hedge funds would do. You know, like um, I know some of the funds I've you know hung out with this week, they would like, you know, trade like millions of dollars on, on average in terms of their average like contract size. It's quite large. Um, and then for us, we're like, oh, $100 there, you know, $1,000 maybe there, um, $200 there, you know, it's not a lot, maybe 50 cents there. <laughs> you know, so some of those would be really small as well. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, you know, we would trade at that very micro level. Um, and in terms of those days where, you know, we're trading like what, 20,000 trades, 25,000 trades a day. Um, so it would be quite a lot. I mean, in terms of the total dollar value that could add up to about 7 billion or even higher than that. Um, and, uh, and so there's a couple of things that we, I should, uh, let you guys be aware of. One is that actually our AUM itself was really small. Um, you know, we're trading that many trades a day. Uh, we actually couldn't accept any more capital into the fund because we were already trading, you know, 7 billion off of what it was like 25 million in AUM or, you know, it was not a lot actually in capital that we had in the fund. Um, and so, so that's another thing I should mention is that a lot of HFT firms that if they do strictly HFT, their AUM is actually really small. So you'll notice that a lot of these companies don't advertise that anywhere um, because like, you know, people think it's a bad thing, but actually it's a good thing. Um, their returns are really high and they're trading a lot and they don't need like infusions of giant amounts of capital in order to get the same amount of returns that, you know, other funds might have. Um, but at the same time, yeah, uh, I'd say mostly it's just based on volume and based on the number of trades we're making. So um, that's typically what it looked like, uh, would just be like, you know, there's a lot of volume. Usually it's like, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of stuff going on that day. Um, there's tons of liquidity and um, lots of just some, some kind of activity. Usually it's triggered, but maybe it could be triggered by some kind of news or it just happens to be, you know, a certain month where just a lot of people are trading. And um, so, yeah, we've had that happen too. We have noticed a little bit of seasonality as well, slightly just in terms of like, okay, summer months, like people are on vacation. So slightly less activity um, maybe during like July, for example, than, you know, during like November or something. Um, but yeah, like just, just barely, it's not like big enough to make a big impact on us, but um, just, uh, you know, small things like that, we do kind of take note and, um, you know, just, uh, I think the good news is like, we try our best to trade in markets that are very, um, you know, highly liquid and, um, that there's a lot of activity going on. That's, uh, those are the markets we tend to do best in. And then if it's the opposite of that, then we tend to do very poorly. So, yeah.